everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Linux Guy. Today I'm going to be showing you how to install an X2Go server and how to use it to make an encrypted connection to your Ubuntu server. And I'm going to be using Ubuntu server, but the instructions for other versions of Linux are going to be real similar to this. If you've not already seen my how to install a graphical interface video, please go check that out because that's going to tell you basically how to get to where we are now. Just as a quick overview, what you need to do is you need to install Taskcel, and then you need to run this command to install Xubuntu Desktop. Or if you want a more vanilla uh, XFCE experience, you could do XFCE4. There's a few little variants. I'm going to be using the full desktop experience that comes with Xubuntu, but it's installed on a Ubuntu server because I wanted some of those server elements installed. What we need to do is first install the server. So I'm on my server now, and I have documentation here that is from X2Go's website about server installation. Now you see here's X2Go client, here's X2Go server. Now there's a whole bunch of options, so if you are on Debian or OpenSUSE or Fedora, you can come to this website, it's just a wiki, xgo.org, and find your operating system. Since I'm doing Ubuntu, I'm gonna click that. And for Ubuntu, what we need to do is we need to add a repository. All of this stuff is gonna be pretty straightforward. You see to add a repository to older versions of Ubuntu, you'll need this, we do not. 14.04 specifically needs this one. Again, we do not. The reason we don't need them is I'm on Ubuntu 20.04, and 20.04 actually already has all this stuff, so if you're on 20.04, you can ignore these. If you're on an older build of Ubuntu, you're going to want to look at them. Also, if you're on an older build of Ubuntu, you might be out of support, so you may want to consider upgrading. All right, so let's go ahead and add this repository. The repository is really nice, and it actually gives you some helpful stuff right there. We're going to need to be running this, but first let's finish setting up a repository. The repository has been added, so now we need to update our system. You see there is X2Go. I'll let it finish updating. Now that X2Go is there, I'm going to refer back to the documentation, and you're going to see we can search apt cache for X2Go, and we should find it. What we need to install are these, which it told us earlier. So let's go ahead and install them. Just because I want to show you what this does, I'm going to run it, but we've already installed what we need. This basically is going to show you all of the X2Go packages available for the system. We don't need all of them, though, which is why I think that it makes more sense to pay attention in the installation process and run what the actual installer told us right after we added the repository. Alright, so our server is now up and running. So the next thing we need to do is connect to it. Remember, you need to have XFCE Desktop installed, so again, if you didn't get that video, on how to install a graphical interface. I talked how to install XFCE specifically, so go back and refer to that one. It'll show you how. X2Go says it supports a lot of stuff. It doesn't. So we'll look at that in a minute, but you can get X2Go, the client, in two ways. I have it here in the pop shop. I've searched for X2Go, and there's this Python GUI for X2Go that you can install. That's not the one I actually have. The one that I got, I got here. And you can see they actually have several clients for Windows, OS X, Ubuntu, Debian, Raspbian, Fedora, Red Hat, Slackware, FreeBSD. There are a lot of choices. You'll notice also with OS X, there's X ports here. Microsoft Windows also needs a piece of software installed to render X programs. Of course, all the Linux distributions use X, so you shouldn't need to do that for them. And I'm on Pop OS, so I won't need to do that. Let's go ahead and click this. You'll see that there is, in fact, an X2Go client in apt-get and you can use that but that's not the one in the pop shop so I just wanted to point that out to you so you don't need their documentation anymore so let's go ahead and open up our x2go client and try out our new server so here we are in it and we want to make a new session and we can call it up here whatever we want now we need the host so on the host I'll get my IP address and there it is you're gonna want your IP address to be a static IP address. You should be able to use the host name. I discourage this. I recommend getting a static IP and pointing yourself there. So now we're going to go ahead and put our username in. It'll save that. We're going to operate on port 22. If you're operating SSH somewhere else, you'll want to specify here. I'm using the default, so it's port 22. And finally, we're going to go with XFCE desktop. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of Linux desktops it lets you choose from. I have yet to have a single one of them work except for XFCE, which is why I specifically recommend you do this with the XFCE. 
So if you're running GNOME normally, but you want to access your server remotely through this method, I strongly recommend using XFCE as it's the only one I can get to reliably work. Maybe that'll change in the future. Who knows? Now there's two ways to open this. You can just click it, or if you're a keyboard guy, you can just start typing here, and it'll autofill Ubuntu VM, or whatever your server is named. So let's go ahead and try to connect to it. And you'll see x 2 has started in our window here. And there we go. We are in Xubuntu, basically. Now, this is Ubuntu server with Xubuntu stuff installed on it. But from here, I can just treat this like any desktop computer. I've got all my applications. And I could go further and tweak it. Uh, my server that I personally use, I go ahead and install the Whisker menu here because I think it's more helpful than the default XFCE applications menu. But if you're like hopelessly lost in a command line, or even if you just want to leverage some nice graphical tools like the uncomplicated firewall GUI, this might be for you. I definitely use it for that. I also use it as a graphical way to interact with my virtual machines on my network. There's a lot of things you can use this for. You can just use it as a way to get on your system and browse your files through a graphical interface because you just might be more familiar with it. Even if you know your way around the command line a little bit, this makes managing your Linux server way easier. And I've got all the graphical comforts that I'm used to. I can go ahead and change permissions here instead of using the command line if, if that's your thing. A lot of Linux guys, it's not their thing. They'd rather do it in the command line, but there are definitely applications for this. One of my biggest applications for this is when I'm away from home and I have a really big download that I want to download to my server and I can't get it with a command like wget. I have to go to a web browser. Well, web browsers only run through a graphical interface, so the only way to do that, really, is to get on here on a graphical interface, open a web browser like Firefox here, and download the thing using Firefox. Well, now I can do that away from home and have it waiting for me when I get home, instead of having to wait till I get home, get on the physical machine, and do it that way. That's a really good example of an application for this. Once I'm done, I can log out, and x to go finishes up. One thing I'd like to note, just as a little side note, this icon can be changed to whatever image you want. So if you plan to have several instances of x to go one thing I might consider doing is changing this icon either to like an icon of the operating system or some kind of image that reminds you of what it is. It's just a little quality of life improvement, makes it look a little bit better. One last thing before I go, all of your traffic that's running through x to go is run over SSH, so it's encrypted end to end, so no one can see what you're doing. As always, thank you for watching The Linux Guy. Please make sure to follow us on Library. Send us a tip if you feel so inclined. A reminder to you YouTube people, your videos come out one day later. Make sure to check us out on Library or BitChute. Library is our primary platform. That's where we're going to engage with most people. And we will see you in the next one.